So I'm really pleased to be here today to talk about the Health Sciences Archives Pandemic Stories Project. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Health Sciences Archives, we are a Department of McMaster's Health Sciences Library. We were founded in 1974 to collect, preserve, and share records documenting the history, life, and people of McMaster's Faculty of Health Sciences and Hamilton Health Sciences. We hold about 300 meters of records in all formats, including films, photos, textual records, architectural drawings, sound recordings, and artifacts. Our earliest record is from 1822, but the bulk of the collection dates from the 1920s to the present day. We receive about 100 reference inquiries each year from researchers all over the world. So the archives launched the Pandemic Stories Project in spring of 2020. This is a collection development project with the goal of building an archival collection documenting the lived experiences of the FHS and HHS communities during the COVID-19 pandemic. This will be a multi-year project that will span the pandemic and beyond. During this first phase of the project, we have been gently promoting this initiative, largely through the Health Sciences Library social media channels and websites. So why is it so important to document our lives right now? Well, it is clear that our society is living through a historic moment, unprecedented in most people's lifetimes. Future researchers will be interested in learning about this crisis, how we managed it, new innovations and discoveries that emerged from it, our day-to-day -day lives throughout the crisis, the impact of inequality, the roots of social conflict and how it changes our society. Archival material will be a crucial resource for understanding today's events. Unfortunately, as many archivists and historians have noted, past pandemics have historically tended to be poorly documented. And in particular, the voices of minority groups have tended to be missing from the historical record. But I'm hopeful that we will have a much richer historical record for the COVID-19 pandemic. Many archives and museums have launched similar projects to document the experiences of their respective communities during this pandemic. And there is a general recognition within the archival community that we need to be really intentional about documenting the experiences of ordinary people or their stories will be lost. There is also a recognition that this pandemic is going to leave behind a largely digital footprint and archivists know that to preserve digital records, we need to acquire them soon after their creation. In the past with paper records, for example, they could trickle into an archive after 50 years and still be legible. However, it is unlikely that a digital record will survive 50 years into the future without some sort of intervention and intentionality around making sure it survives. So who can contribute to our project? Uh, well, basically anyone within the FHS and HHS community. The more perspectives, the more voices, the better for the historical record. So this would include staff, students, researchers, faculty members, all frontline workers, administrators, and patients. So what kind of material are we collecting? Uh, we're collecting photographs, correspondence, reflections, videos, sound recordings, journals, artwork, music, poetry, Twitter feeds, presentation material, research material, meeting minutes, reports, publications, and unique artifacts. Some examples of themes or topics that would be of interest for us to record would include things like how the daily operations at FHS and HHS have changed, what is it like being a student or working from home at this time? What is it like conducting research at this time? How has the way we teach or deliver healthcare changed? Uh, the experiences of frontline workers, initiatives to help frontline workers in vulnerable community groups, such as with grocery deliveries, day-to-day uh, -day life experiences, such as what are you doing for fun and to pass the time? We'd also be interested in how the pandemic has changed the way you source food or celebrate special occasions. It's hard to be completely exhaustive with these lists because everyone's story is unique, but hopefully these examples help give an idea of the sort of stories we would love to document. A common question I receive is, what are you going to do with the material that I donate to you? 
Well, the short answer is we will care for it and preserve it. Physical material will be rehoused in archival enclosures and stored in our temperature and humidity controlled storage room. Electronic records will be preserved through our digital preservation software and copies stored on our server. We have a robust archival database that we use to catalog the collection and capture important data such as names and dates and other contextual information researchers will need to fully understand the material. Uh, if no restrictions are placed on the donation, it will be made available for research use. And the ways it might be used by researchers is limitless. So common archival researchers would include uh, staff and faculty of FHS and HHS, students, academics, filmmakers, genealogists, journalists, and museum curators. I can imagine some um, researchers who might be interested in a collection like this would include sociologists, anthropologists, psychologists, infectious disease historians, policymakers. The really exciting thing about archival material is how many different ways it might be used and how valuable one document could be to so many different research projects. Um, so I wanted to quickly mention a, a note about privacy. Uh, when material comes to an archive, it doesn't necessarily have to be open to researchers right away. We can close the collection for a period of time. The key is that we take care of the material so it can be accessed by researchers in the future. And this could be 50 or 100 years from now. Feelings about privacy varies from donor to donor and is a conversation I have with every donor at the time of donation. But the key is that there is some flexibility around this and the hope is that this isn't a barrier uh, to someone making a donation to the archive. So quickly, I just wanna go over some future plans for the project. Uh, once the pandemic is past us or we come back to some sense of normalcy and have had a chance to breathe, um, I hope to build up more momentum with the project. I'd love to create a committee or network of people within FHS and HHS who can help connect me with people within our community who played different roles during the pandemic, who would have varying perspectives to share our really interesting stories. And with ethics approval, I would love Love to record oral history interviews with these people and these interviews could be a valuable complement to the other archival records in our holdings. Uh, we also just gently launched a related project in partnership with the McMaster Midwifery Research Centre to document the experiences of midwives and midwifery students across Canada during the COVID-19 pandemic and I'm excited to see where this project goes. This brings me to the end. Uh, I'd like to thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my presentation. And if anyone has any questions, I'm not sure how much time we have for questions right now, but if you have questions or comments or want to contribute to the project, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much.